I would like to introduce Johannes Laumann, who is Chief Investment Officer of Notaris. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Um, maybe you can start by giving us a background of the investment approach and sector focus. Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, we um, differentiate in two types of investments. So we differentiate in the platform investments and add-on investments. Um, also, our investment approach there is, um, is different. Um, let me first go to the platform. So platform is a typical turnaround deal, how we grew up. It's our DNA, it's our core. Meaning we do special situations, we do carve out from large corporates, we buy normally a strong balance sheet, we pay a nominal amount of purchase price. Potentially we do invest in the company um, in terms of, of capex, in terms of equity strength and et cetera, et cetera. And then we, we go in and do the operational turnaround of this business until this business is stabilized. That is our first part and core investment of Mutaris, what we've grown up with and uh, what is the DNA for us. And then um, we have, or I have decided a year back, that we go intensively into a buy and build strategy, which means we also do add-on acquisitions. And they are focused purely on the business where the add-on goes into. So they're purely focused on geographical expansion, they are focused on product in, uh, expansion, on product innovation, footprints, et cetera, et cetera. And um, those are, um, can be um, dowry deals, but also can be leading to significant equity checks. And those add-ons we primarily um, finance through a bond, which we have raised in 2020, the beginning of the year, and have tapped in the middle of the year in, 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 in August 2020 on a total value of 70 million seven zero. So those are the two types of acquisitions we do. And um, those two types, I'm quite certain, um, will lead us to a total revenue of 3 billion per year, which is our target for 2023. After the latest acquisitions you have seen, I'm quite comfortable that we reach this target earlier or exceed this target in 2023. The areas where we are active are, um, we, we, we do focus on three areas, which does not mean we are not opportunistic for the rest, but the main areas are automotive and mobility. That's where we're coming from. This is where we have a lot of knowledge. Our operational people, we have 70, 70 right now on the, on the payroll. Um, they're mainly also coming from the segment. Then we have the um, technology segment where we have, um, which was basically also the segment where I was involved in the operational turnarounds of, of groups like Balkadur or Dongres, where um, we focus on, on, on takeover of, of, of uh, technology companies, which um, kind of balances the automotive sector because the automotive mobility sector is normally an early cycle and the technology sector is more late cycle. So whatever the cycle is, we have opportunities, either on the buy side or on the sell side. And then the third, uh, the third pillar, which I have pushed um, heavily in the past uh, 12 to 18 months, is the goods and service segment. And the goods and service segment is basically neutral from any in economical development. So we have their companies... Um, for example, the latest acquisition, La Paire, is into this. So um, making and selling windows and doors um, for do-it-yourself, but also for professionals. We have a company there um, doing toilet paper. Uh, we have a company in there doing logistics for food and pharma, back city in Austria. So this is, of course, they also feel dip of a COVID-19 pandemic, but the swings are... Um, um, you know, much, much lower than they are in other industries. So this is more to flatten out. So we have a good balance in our portfolio. And if you look at our portfolio right now, excluding La Pair, of course, because the 600 million will boost as hell, um, all of them are in the range of six to 800 million in, in turnover as we speak. So a pretty good balance of the three segments. And please, um, can you also discuss the market opportunities you have seen in the current market environment as a turnaround specialist? Well, I'm, I'm not that old, but I think this is uh, more or less a once in a lifetime opportunity for a turnaround investor, right? Um, we are 
swamped with opportunities. So for, for October, I can give you a precise number. On average, we have received 47 teasers a day, uh, working day. <laughs> but uh, uh, 47 teasers all around uh, our offices. So, um, but this is also um, uh, quite driven by the extension of our footprint. So we have opened a new office in Stockholm and Madrid recently, where I expect great things happening. And then we have Milan, we have Paris, we have London, we have Germany, where, um, uh, where we are very active and very well known and have made a lot of transactions. So um, all over those uh, offices, we are on, on 47 um, opportunities per day. And um, this, is just, uh, this is just amazing. The, the majority of them, of course, maybe it's not for us. Uh, but um, if, you, if you can imagine that only uh, 2% or 1% of uh, all the opportunities you receive is, is, is quite interesting. You come up with, uh, with two or three cases per week, which is, uh, which is quite a heavy workload. Um, what we see in the market, and maybe your question also, I understand in that direction, is that we have seen quite early um, in this year, let's say April, May, a lot of retail business coming. I think the wave of retail is now over. So either the retailers are sold, the retailers are in secure hands, or the retailers are bust. Um, now, um, what we see now is, is, is definitely the automotive sectors. OEM suppliers are, are significantly coming up on the market now. And in this, this started, let's say, September, October. Um, uh, lately, but then the, um, in both times, what is what is very important is that there are strategic exits coming, and the strategic exits are really corporates who use, I would say, use okay, um, this COVID nineteen in order to um, divest um, unloved childs or unloved businesses. So this is a, a quite important thing, and. When they have decided to divest, it also means they do divest. So a year ago, it was like they test the market, et cetera, et cetera, and then they maybe withdraw from the market the case again. Now, when it's on the market, they really divest. Can you also shed some light on your prospective investment pipeline? Uh, well, I cannot speak about individual cases, um, of course. Uh, as, as, as maybe some people would like to hear or wish. Um, but, I mean, 2021 was already an amazing year for us, right? And um, the, the, the pipeline is full. The pipeline is, is, is full. Um, my nights are very short. I'm reading SPAs uh, up and down. And there's more to come for us, even though there is only five weeks for Christmas. Um, I'm expecting... I'm expecting some signings on transactions. And um, as you could hear, I'm not speaking in singular, I'm speaking in plural terms. Okay, I understand. And what is the maturity of your current portfolio and exit prospects? Well, predominantly, of course, we were extremely active on the buy side recently in the last 12 to 18 months. And um, this means that the, the majority of the portfolio, when you go in quantitative numbers of portfolios, are sitting in the first phase, which we call the realignment phase. We, we, uh, we go in three phases. Realignment is the first phase. You buy something and you really have to restructure it in order to turn it around. In the second phase are more the companies which are um, um, a bit longer in the portfolio, restructured, and have acquired add-ons. So, for example, Keeper or Barcadur, and they try to grasp the synergies of those events. And then we have the third sector, which we call the harvesting sector. And in the harvesting sector, we have, we have two types of companies. We have a company which is, which is um, um, predominantly for strategic reasons. So, um, can be uh, that we hold this company because we want to stay in the industry um, and we want to have a company industry. So, for example, we have UPEC, which is very long in the portfolio, but it's, it's the only pure oil and gas company we have. 
So this is a, a strategic fit where we so far have decided to keep the company because of the oil and gas strategic fit. And then we have other companies which we, which, uh, we call harvesting phase, like the SDS group, like the Dongus group, um, uh, some pies close to that, um, where we say, okay, we have done our job, we have done the turnaround, we have done the growth, we have done the profitability, so it's time to think when is the best time for a structured exit of this uh, company. And um, maybe this is a, a, a slight differentiator to the past. I, I'm, I'm, I'm working heavily on structured exit uh, because I believe the full life cycle is important for us and not only, um, uh, not only pieces of it. Thank you. And uh, what is your dividend policy and near-term dividend outlook? Yeah, on our um, capital markets day in October, which we... Um, which we held in Frankfurt and um, when you see the current lockdown it's just a dream because we hold it in person um, uh, and over video. We, we just announced that in the last three years we have um, dividend one euro per share and this year we have announced that this is going to be the base dividend for the future. So the base dividend comes purely from management fees which, which are consulting income and which are dividends from portfolio. So this will bring us to at least one euro base dividend, which we have already announced, which will happen next year. And then we announced that if there is a significant exit and uh, coming exit proceeds into our pocket, we will let our shareholders participate uh, on this through a performance dividend. And we have already indicated that the Nexiva exit in Italy, if that goes through, and uh, uh, in brackets I have... Uh, no serious doubt that it wouldn't, um, that the Nixiva exit will lead to such a performance dividend. Johannes Laumann, Chief Investment Officer of Mutaris, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Stay safe.